you're a Quest Gamer, there is something that you have to try if you have a PC ready PC. I meant VR ready PC. Let's get into it. Now that it's basically out of beta, although you will have to enable it in the beta tab still, you can use AirLink and to communicate between your headset and your PC wirelessly. I have been using my headset already with my PC, but with an Oculus Link cable. And as much as that's nice, it is not the same as being wireless, which if you're playing games only on your Quest, you're gonna know that being wireless is the way to go. So if you wanna set up AirLink, you can do it with your existing Wi-Fi, or you can get a dedicated router, and that's what I did. I didn't find a whole lot in terms of setups for this, so I'm just gonna go over the setup that I used. I already had my PC connected to my network via Ethernet, so I was just gonna piggyback off of that. I just picked up a Wi-Fi 6 router, which is probably what you're going to want. This is the one that I happened to pick up just because it was available locally, but you can go nuts with this if you really want to. I don't know how much the experience improves with the higher end ones. This is probably on the lower end range of Wi-Fi 6 routers, but still the experience has been pretty good, so I'm just going to go over that. I'm going to show you exactly what I did with this router, but every router is going to have something similar. Anyway, the connection from your existing network is going to go into that yellow port. That's going to be the uplink to this router. And then you can connect your computer from one of these ports back into it. That way you still have a hardware connection on your PC. And this is just acting as an access point basically to your quest. Once you have everything connected and powered on, Give it about a minute for it to kind of boot up and get going. If you try to go anywhere, let's say go to any website, you're probably going to get redirected to this page. You can set it up with the app, but I'm going to click down here. Uh, if you don't have a compatible smartphone, click here. I just don't want to bother downloading another fucking app. Sure, we'll just agree to all of this. It'll take a second and try to figure out the network. Last time it was a little bit hit or miss on that. I was gonna set up the configuration manually anyway. So just fill out this page. And here is where you're really gonna want to set up your network. Of course, you can name it whatever the hell you want. Really, the only thing you're gonna care about is the five gigahertz network. I'm gonna leave the default for this and I'm just gonna rename the this one, I'm just gonna call it AirLink for now and just change the password to something. And I'm not gonna enable Smart Connect, click Next. And it'll take a second and apply those settings. We'll meet back when that's done. Once that's done, just hit Next and we're gonna see what the hell it ended up actually doing because we don't want this to act as a normal router would, which is when you connect it to your modem. This thing is gonna be what's responsible for assigning IP addresses and stuff like that. Since we already have something else doing that, we want to make sure that this is only acting as an access point, basically. If you end up having to update the firmware on the router, you might end up on this page to register your warranty, of course. I don't think anybody really gives a shit about that, so we're going to ignore that for now. You can go to this page here, routerlogin.com, and that should reroute to your actual router. You might be prompted to enter in your credentials, which is something that you would have set up earlier, the username being admin, the password being whatever you set it to be. In this page, we're going to want to do a couple of different things, but they're going to be in the advanced tab. Let's go over there and we're going to go to setup wireless setup. And this is where we're going to disable a couple of things, namely the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We really don't need that. I'm just going to uncheck that. Don't think it really actually matters on that part. You can set the channel to something that you know is going to be a little bit more free in your area. The easiest way to check this would probably be to download an app uh, if you have Android you can download Wi-Fi Analyzer and that'll give you a visual representation of the channels around you and you can try to pick the one that is the most available. If you don't really want to bother with that, just stick with the default. You're probably going to be fine. If you want to get a little bit more nitpicky, you can. It's pretty easy. Once we have that, we're just going to hit apply and this is only going to disable the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Some people say that you get 
even better performance slightly by disabling the password on your five gigahertz one and whitelisting only the quest to be available to connect. I'm not really sure about that. I think I'd just rather have a password on it just to prevent other people from even trying to connect to the network, just to avoid potential headaches. Although you'd probably be fine doing it the other way too. Once we have that actually applied and fully working, the other thing we're gonna do is in the advanced setup, because you could leave it like this if you really wanted to, but what this is going to make happen is that your desktop, since you have it wired into your new access point or your router, it's gonna be getting IP addresses from your router, which could potentially cause conflicts when you're trying to access something else in your network. So I'm gonna change the mode that it's in to be an access point. So go to advanced setup, router AP slash bridge mode, and I'm gonna set it to be AP mode. So I'm just going to, yep, let it get the address from there, hit apply. You're not going to be able to get to it from the IP, so just remember that router login.net and you're probably going to be fine. Give it a second. Once that's complete, you should be pretty much good to go. Your computer has access to the internet and so will your quest once you have that connected to your five gigahertz connection coming from this router specifically. After you get your quest connected to that five gigahertz network, make sure to enable air link within the settings of the actual quest. On your PC side, open the Oculus app, go in into the settings, beta, and make sure that air link is checked on. You will have to do this basically every time you reboot your computer and it will time out within 24 hours anyway. So just keep that in mind. After that, the Quest should be able to pick up the new connection and you should be able to connect and start playing games already. If you don't have it installed already, make sure that you have, of course, the Oculus software installed and maybe Steam VR so you can play some Steam games while you're at it. Anyway, I will leave links to this and a couple of other alternatives that you might want to consider. If any of this stuff helped you, definitely leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching, y'all. Catch you on the next.